Here's a look at a bunch of times that Ramsey absolutely hated the food. I know, that does so, so little to narrow things down, but I'm about to make it harder. We're getting into all three of Ramsey's biggest shows. Well, starting things off, this contestant right here didn't stand a chance to remain on MasterChef after what he served. Mate, <laughs> I'm supposed to eat this? Really? I would send you home now. This is <laughs> Might be a memento for you to take home. These are some of the most disgusting dishes to have ever been served on MasterChef. And there's no way this contestant would stay on the show after what he served in season five. So during the elimination round, things didn't go as planned for Mark. Mark decided to whip up peppercorn filet with a Bernays sauce along with whipped rosemary garlic potatoes. Basically a typical French dish. But guess what? Have you ever been to France? No. French cookbooks? French no. restaurants? No. Okay. Yeah, this guy didn't know the first thing about French cuisine. And here he was, going in fully blind, yet somehow filled with confidence. So when time finally ran out and he had to present his dish, you can say he didn't exactly win any medal. I have a filet crusted peppercorn, a creamy rosemary garlic mashed with a bernice sauce. Not only did it look boring, but it also had some major problems. And Joe didn't even taste it before he started to pick at him. You normally put Bernays sauce on your steak? French. Not many French people I know, but... Oh boy. Dude should have looked in a cookbook first, I think. And the fact that he didn't hit the books before going in blind was going to be his undoing. Then Joe pointed out the texture of the mashed potatoes, which were far from appetizing. Does the consistency look nice? You like the thickness of it? I would have liked them a little thicker. Thicker than that? So the problem was that they were thick and gooey, but Mark over here would have liked them even thicker. Now imagine if he did make them thicker like he'd initially planned to. Joe probably would have kicked him to the curb right then and there. But back in our version of events, Joe wasn't impressed. But when he finally got around to tasting it, he was beyond shocked. Raw? Liquidy. It's raw flour in here. What? Joe was visibly taken aback. And it wasn't made with traditional ingredients alone. Mark snuck in an unwelcome and decidedly not traditional addition. Raw flour. Apparently, the mashed potatoes were too runny, and Mark thought that adding raw flour would help. But clearly, it didn't. I mean, come on. Being on a cooking show and not knowing how to whip up mashed potatoes of all things, one of the simplest dishes? What is this, amateur hour? Now, I've been going on and on about Joe's reaction. So, how do you think Ramsay took it? Well... There are several things that you can never do in cooking, and adding flour to a liquid mashed potato is one of them. In the end, Mark couldn't help but acknowledge his mistake. He knew that he had screwed up big time, and there was no way he could save himself. And just like he expected, thanks to this one mistake, he was sent home packing. But hey, at least when it comes to serving up some pretty messed up dishes, Mark is in good company. If you ask me, I think Jennifer's dish from season two, episode seven, was an even bigger disaster. What happened is, during the mystery box challenge, the contestants were tasked with preparing lamb. Easy peasy, right? But that's when Jennifer ended up making a hasty decision. Originally, I was just gonna stick with my lollipop chops. Maybe I should try to throw it on there. I figured that I would have enough time. She decided to use a whole bunch of the lamb, thinking she had enough time to cook it through. But boy, was she so wrong. And finally, when the time was up, Jennifer realized what a huge mistake she had made. The judges were quick to notice it too. Ramsey even singled her out in front of everyone, saying her dish stood out for all the wrong reasons. Meanwhile, Joe wasted no time in laying it all out in the open too. This lamb is raw, is completely raw. Not exactly a shocker though, right? I could see that one coming from like a mile away. I mean, what was she even thinking? Throwing a lamb chop into a hot pan and expecting it to be done in 10 minutes? I think we're going beyond an amateur mistake here. Safe to say, the lamb was a complete disaster. And when Joe cut into it, this is what he saw. It would be dangerous to serve a piece of lamb like this to a judge. 
This is raw. The lamb was so raw that you couldn't even tell if someone tried to cook it unless they looked at the pathetic sear on the outside. What made it even worse was the fact that if it were served in a restaurant and someone actually ate it, it'd be a one-way ticket to the ER. This time, Joe's anger was definitely justified. This time. Anyway, he was so pissed that what he said next was totally expected. If it were for me, this is not an elimination round. I would send you home now. Damn, that's gotta sting. Jennifer was left in tears and sure as hell regretted her choice for a long time to come, I bet. But hey, at least one thing's for sure, she won't repeat the same mistake ever again. Well, raw lamb chops are definitely not something you'd want on your plate, but this next one, trust me, you wouldn't want to be anywhere near it. So let's head to episode 10 of season 3, where David found himself in the elimination round. And the rules were pretty simple. The contestants had to create one dish using a pizza stone. But it seemed like David struggled quite a bit. Eh, maybe that's underselling it. I roasted the potatoes in the pizza stone, I did the bacon in the pizza stone, and I did the uh, lobster on the pizza stone as well. Anyone hungry? No? That's what I thought. Now, Graham wasn't too happy about the dish either. This looks really bad. Bad would be an understatement, and I think Graham realized that too, because what he said next was a burn for the ages. It almost looks like some kind of soup, but then you got like this big old long piece of bacon that looked like it just fell in it from someone's breakfast plate. You know what? That might sound brutal, but it was some much needed criticism. The whole dish looked like a mess, and that single strip of bacon wasn't helping at all. It seemed out of place, if anything. Even David himself knew he messed up, but what could he possibly do at that point? To make things worse, the taste wasn't any good either, and his reaction to it must have stunk. Come on, Dave. You know, that look of disappointment hurts way more than any of the anger I've talked about so far. But Joe came forward to taste next, and I'm sure you can guess that he was going to bring enough anger for both him and Graham to share. And so it didn't really come as a shock that these were his first words as soon as he attempted to taste the dish. I'm supposed to eat this? Really? And when he finally did taste it, you won't believe what he had to say. Watching you cook this was just a letdown. Misled you a bit there, huh? No anger, just seething disappointment. He couldn't believe how a guy who was one of the top contenders that season could ever bring a dish like that to the table. And so he pulled out his signature move. This is the most important dish of your life, guys. You see this? This is that was a bit much in my opinion, but that's Joe for you. Him and his trash can have a special sort of relationship. And of course, it's his signature move, so it wasn't the only time he disposed of food like that. In season three, episode four's elimination test, Helen presented her dish and what she put on the table didn't look edible from any angle. That is safran risotto topped with scallops that are crusted in a red peppercorn smoked sea salt wrapped in burdock root. To Ramsey, there's no way even the slightest error would go unnoticed. And this dish had a ton of them. Ramsey could tell what was wrong with it immediately. The center of that bright grain of rice, what does that mean? That it's perhaps undercooked? Yeah, it was definitely not a matter of perhaps. The rice was undercooked. But that wasn't the only thing wrong with the dish. It was just the beginning. What the f is that? A basket. Oh, God, scream. A burdock basket. Did she mistake Master Chef for like an arts and craft show or something? Ramsey nearly wanted to pull his hair out. That's how wrong the dish was. And the scallops stuffed inside were completely raw to top it all off. I feel like at this point, Helen wanted to get eliminated because there's no way someone who wanted to stay on the show could possibly put out raw food so brazenly like that. I mean, first it was raw rice, then it was raw scallops. Man, was there anything on that plate that was actually cooked? And Ramsey, he was beyond disappointed, and what he said next was totally justified. I'm looking at that, and I'm looking at the MasterChef trophy, I'm thinking, nah. That was Ramsey, but like I alluded to earlier, it's time for Joe. Well, let's just say if I were Helen, I'd start crying on the spot. Scallop basket. 
throw in the garbage basket. Brutal doesn't even begin to cover it. Yeah, MasterChef isn't just a game, and treating it like one isn't an option if you want to win. Chalk that up as a rare moment where his and my opinions are aligned. You can't just bring whatever to the table and call it a dish so long as it's got some fancy avant-garde element. Especially if that frou-frou nonsense is raw. Well, presenting a dish like that was a bold move. But up next, I've got a contestant who sure knew how to give tough competition. So for this one, we're heading to season four, where the stakes were higher than ever. But that didn't stop the contestants from whipping up some pretty questionable dishes. And who could be a better example than Howard Simpson? Considered one of the weakest, if not the worst, Howard sure knew how to piss off all the judges with his dishes. But one dish stood out in particular. During the elimination round in episode 4, he presented a dish so appalling that Ramsay was genuinely concerned just by looking at it. Did you disappear into the library for half an hour? No, I did not. What is it, please? I mean, I'd ask the same question, because what was that? Apparently, it was poached langoustine, and it looked far from appetizing. Citrus salad with a champion vinaigrette, diced mangoes, sliced grapefruit, and just put the langoustine on top. The dish looked like he just tossed in some raw veggies he saw lying around in the kitchen. Or better yet, picked up from the leaf litter outside. Ramsey was obviously pissed, and what did he do? Well, check it out yourselves. Well, I am blown away. I'm shocked. In fact, I'm not even gonna eat it. Honestly, Ramsey's reaction was pretty expected. This guy had 60 minutes to whip up an actual dish, and he decided to throw some raw veggies on a plate, give it a fancy name, and call it a dish? What a joke! And his excuse for his lack of creativity was that he was concentrating more on the vinaigrette. But here's the thing. The judges couldn't even see the vinaigrette he was focusing so hard on. Not just Ramsey, but the rest of the judges too. But wait, what Ramsey said next was so brutal that it had to have been playing on repeat in his head for weeks afterwards. You know I'm not a rabbit, and yet you serve me food that's fit for a rabbit hutch, and you're expecting me to get blown away. I mean, he's not wrong. This dish did look more like rabbit food than human food, so much so that if someone said it was for a rabbit, I'd believe them. And guess what? Ramsey felt so disrespected that he didn't even taste the dish. And well, next it was time for Joe to give his much-valued criticism. And you best believe he gave a harder blow than Ramsey. I went out and told everyone how good you were. You're in a landslide. This is a waste of our time. Oh boy. And nope, he didn't stop there. At this point, if it up to me, I throw you out. I put my ass on the line for you, and that's the you give me? Well, this dish ideally should have sent him packing. I mean, what he presented wasn't just a low-effort dish with a fancy name, but a disrespect to the culinary art in general. And he was wasting both his fellow contestants' time and the judges. His own, too, if you feel charitable enough. But he somehow managed to dodge the bullet that night, but he wasn't the only contestant who didn't deserve the platform. Episode 10, Season 4, was a hell of a ride for Beanie. And why do I say that? Because during the lemon meringue pie pressure test, he messed up his pie in spectacular fashion. So it was finally his turn to get his pie judged, and Ramsey's first impression was far from impressed. Oh, Beamy. Wow. He sure was wowed, but not in a good way. And when he cut into the pie, good god, things took a turn for the worse. Ramsey couldn't even cut into the pie properly. And you want to know why? Well, I mean... Turns out, the whole pie was mushy and runny on the inside. No wonder he couldn't get a clean cut. It was so bad that Ramsey literally had to bring in two cocktail glasses. And it should be obvious why he needed them, right? That's right, he legit had to pour the pie filling into a glass to actually have a way to put it into his mouth. As for the taste, after all the effort Ramsey put in trying to get a drop of it, well, his reaction should clear things up for ya. Me. 
oh, he regretted putting that into his mouth for sure. The taste was absolutely appalling. And you could see that very well from the look on his face. Apparently, he made the mistake of adding cream of tartar to thicken his curd instead of cornstarch. Like, I can see the logic there, but still. Ramsey was beyond shocked, and not to mention pissed. And his response to Beamy's carelessness was one for the books. What are you trying to do, kill us? Ramsey then told him that there was only supposed to be a teaspoon in the recipe. But when he asked Beamy how much he added, he straight up said he added 10 <laughs> tablespoons. That's 30 times as much as he needed for reference, claiming that he messed up and grabbed the wrong ingredient. And, well, I doubt anyone was surprised he got the boot. I guess you could say that you wouldn't want to be him right now. Anyway, Beamy wasn't the only one to mess up a meringue. My last pick is no stranger to messing up his dishes, but this time, he messed up so spectacularly that it actually bends the mind. But before that, take a moment to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. You could also become a member of the channel by hitting the tab right here. So let's keep the support pouring in, you guys. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. And now, circling back, the home cook I'm talking about is Lynn, aka Mr. Finesse, as Ramsey would like to call him. In episode 13 of season 4, during the $5 Walmart bake sale elimination challenge, Lynn had presented his dish, and by the looks of of it, it was probably about as good as those frozen meals Ramsey's selling there. Are you serious? Yeah, that's an immediate no from me. Ramsey thought the dish looked so disgusting that he even called the rest of the judges over to take a look at it. And trust me, they weren't huge fans either. And Joe, he made his displeasure known loud and clear. Did you drive over it? What is it? Man, leave it to Joe to come up with the craziest analogies. But hey, it did look like someone had just run over it. I'd say it looked worse, even. Apparently, Lynn had prepared a baked meringue with banana puree. And I'm not gonna lie, there's no way I could tell that just by looking at it. If you've noticed, most times, Ramsey chooses to keep his cool on MasterChef, but this dish? It brought out the Hell's Kitchen in him. He straight up destroyed Lynn by comparing it to cow shit. Now, I don't know about you, but if I were Lynn, I'd want to dig a hole and bury myself right then and there. And when Ramsey went for a bite, he had a few things to say. And trust me, none of them were good. It's like eating a wall insulator with some strawberry or banana that your granddad left under his bed before he passed. I mean, if you thought Joe was the boss of insults, then Ramsey's the CEO. But guess what? The harsh feedback was totally justified. The dish was completely rancid. Only someone who had lost their sense of taste and smell could ever try it and come out the other end unscathed. And Ramsey was far from done yet, too. That is the worst dish I have seen on a plate in four years of MasterChef. Yeesh. But things didn't get any better when Joe came to taste the dish. But this time around, he turned out to be smarter than Ramsey. He wanted to spare himself the pain of tasting it, and so instead, he pulled his signature move. Might be a memento for you to take home. Well, 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 that's how Lynn's last day on the show came to an end. But this entire restaurant was gonna make Ramsay sick before long. It's one thing to make Ramsay angry, but it's another thing entirely to make him sick. Oh yeah, I'm talking about some of the filthiest restaurants I've ever seen, led by chefs and owners who just didn't give a damn. And this restaurant in Plainfield, New Jersey, without a doubt takes the number one spot. Yeah, it had to be Blackberries. With barely any customers showing up, the restaurant, owned by Shelly Winters, was in such bad shape that the business was at an all-time low, and closure was imminent. And what was the biggest problem? Well, this. The macaroni actually fell in. Yeah, as usual, it all came down to the food. Now, when Ramsey arrived, he quickly sat down for a tasting, but he just wasn't impressed. Just like someone shot on my plate. It's dry. Ramsey had ordered smoked pork chops and expected them to be delicious, but what he got instead looked like 
well, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, a pile of shits on a plate. Things got worse when the chitlins came in. The dish looks so plain that Ramsey had to actually pray before digging in. And when he finally took a bite, you have to see his reaction. <laughs> he definitely doesn't look happy, I'll tell you that much. But hold on, where is he going? Toilet, excuse me. I knew they'd come out quicker than they went in. Damn, I guess even Ramsey has his limits. If I was the owner, I would have died of embarrassment, but she somehow found the entire ordeal funny. Meanwhile, poor Ramsey was having the worst time of his life. Oh, this chair is gross. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Honestly, maybe them closing down instead of calling Ramsey over to help would have been for the best. But what happened in this next restaurant was even worse. As you probably know, Ramsey usually finds the grossest stuff in either the storage room or in the basement. But at Dylan's, it was a totally different story. As soon as Ramsey arrived, it was the first thing he saw. Let's sit at this table, shall we? Yeah. Okay, good. This American Irish restaurant, which also served Indian cuisine because, you know, why not, needed a health inspection immediately. The place had more flies than customers, and there were napkins thrown all over the place. Apparently, hygiene was the least of the owner's concerns. And don't even get me started on the food. It was probably the worst Ramsay has ever seen. There's meat in there. Um, that one's got meat in there. It's not vegetarian. It tastes like lamb. So the problem at Dylan's was they served you more than you bargained for. And I don't mean in terms of quantity. You see, Ramsey had ordered a vegetarian dish, but what he got instead was lamb. And it wasn't even halfway decent lamb. Yeah, had it been for anyone else, Muhammad would have found himself in some serious trouble. If a particularly litigious customer showed up, it'd have been a slam dunk of a lawsuit. But hey, he was probably safe because, you know, zero customers and all that. But the next dish was somehow even worse. Ramsey ordered some beef buna, but you have to see what he was served instead. That is not a piece of beef. It was lamb. <laughs> Ramsey was so pissed he was struggling to find words to describe the situation. He finally understood that there was something majorly wrong in the kitchen, and so he decided to confront the chef. But what he found in there was shocking. What he says that uh, that lamb is probably the old lamb. You serve me old lamb? Oh yeah. At this point, Ramsey was regretting his decision to come over. But the worst was yet to come. When Ramsey went in for a deeper inspection of the kitchen, you won't believe what he found. What is that? I don't know what it is. You don't know? Moldy. That is, quite frankly, the worst hamburger I've ever seen in my entire life. God, these were my fucking potatoes for lunch. And that wasn't even the half of it. Steak! Look at that! Look! Cockroaches. Holy shit. I mean, it's, it's, it's not even a pepper. It's rotten. Yeah, so if you want food poisoning, head on over to Dylan's. But what happened in this next restaurant was somehow even wilder. So Grasshopper in Carlstadt, New Jersey, had definitely seen better days. Obviously, it's dead tonight. Just go home, okay? As far as why the restaurant is failing. But Mitch and Maureen Sandler, the owners, were struggling to keep the place together after the customers stopped showing up. When Ramsey arrived, he was all business. After all, how bad could the food be, right? Surely they'll serve decent food this time, right? Well, turns out it surpassed Ramsey's expectations, but not in a good way. It's like somebody's dropped sliced onions into boiling dishwater. Yeah, things kicked off on a bad note. The soup was so bad that Ramsey felt like he was drinking piss. And what followed next only made his experience even more bitter. Cold congealed gravy. Now, you've seen Ramsey go red, but this dish was so bad that his face went pale after he ate it. And after one look into the kitchen, Ramsey was on the verge of passing out. Okay, 
you see that there? Blood. Blood from where? From the meat. Blood from the meat and the mozzarella sticks. These guys actually refried frozen deep fried chicken. That's just the height of laziness. And don't even get me started on how unhealthy it can be. To make things worse, Ramsey then discovered that the owner had no idea when the fridge was last cleaned. Well, that pretty much explains the state of the chicken tenders he found. Slimy. Yeah, the chicken comes like that. The chicken comes like that. Look how slimy it is. Look how slimy it is. Uh. Okay, I think I'm done with Grasshopper now. E editors, cut the footage. E editors, cut the footage, please. Whew. Okay. So, yeah, Ramsey was disappointed. Serving food seasoned with bacteria will certainly get him that way. And this next restaurant wasn't any better, since they almost got Ramsey to throw up. So we're heading to one of the oldest restaurants in Lancaster, California. They say old is gold, but Casa Roma was better off being sold. You see, owners Nyla and her son Jeremy Christian didn't need much help in running the business into the ground. While they tried to keep a lot of their mistakes under wraps, when Ramsey arrived, he found a whole pile of garbage under his seat. Safe to say, the place needed some deep cleaning and fast. But when it came to the food, Ramsey was in for a shock. Fat. The oil was literally dripping out of the sandwich he ordered. For his sake, I hope Ramsey's got a good insurance policy when he visits the States, since I think he'd get a heart attack just being in the same room as that sandwich. As for the pizza, well, for an Italian restaurant, they had no idea how to make a decent pie. Unfortunately, the dough is raw, so thick. It's like wallpaper paste, raw. But the pantry was where things got really bad. From rotten veggies to open buckets of sauce, it was an absolute travesty. But what really stole the show was the meat segment. This is outrageous. Look at it. It sticks to your hand. It's that rancid. So imagine you order a simple hamburger and this is where they get the meat from. Yeah, no thanks. But somehow there were still more atrocities to find. That's just over three months old. Jeez. At this point, Ramsey was beyond disgusted. The meat was legit three months old, and the fact he actually ate it was finally beginning to hit him. And a few minutes later, he couldn't hold it in anymore. <laughs> Yeah, me neither, chef. Now, while Casa Roma was one hell of a restaurant, I can assure you what's coming next will give it a run for its money. Located in Harrison, New Jersey, what is it with all these nasty New Jersey restaurants? Jeez. The Spanish Pavilion was run by Jerry Fernandez, his mom, Balbina, and his brother, Michael. Now, you must be thinking, since there are three people managing the place, everything must be going well. Well, you know what they say about too many cooks. And that adage could definitely be extended to the food, since when Ramsey ordered his first dish, it was a next level disaster. It just looks like lobster was dead before they cooked it. And do you remember that infamous lobster tank where lobsters were feeding off their dead brethren? He's dead. A dead lobster. No, he's gone. Is he? No. Yeah. That was a Spanish pavilion trade secret. So after seeing the horrid condition of the restaurant, when Ramsey was offered some desserts, his response wasn't much of a surprise. It's very kind, but I've lost my appetite. Thank you. Well, I'm glad he took the hint and stopped himself from putting himself through the torture he'd endured so far. And it was a good idea too, because what he found in the walk-in fridge was disgusting. From unlabeled meat to enough chicken to last a lifetime, this place certainly had plenty to go around. But the true horror was revealed when he checked the other fridge. Look, dead. Decomposed, soft, dead. Yep, more dead lobsters. And no, they weren't just dead, they were decomposing right in front of him. Yeah, the less said about this place, the better. 
but I'm sure you've heard about this next place. Remember the belly dancer turned restaurant owner Rishi? Well, everything looked bright and dazzling on the outside of Prohibition Grill, but when it came down to it, Ramsey was disappointed. Mm, that's just slop. Horrible, nasty, loose. And things just kept going downhill from there. His next order was pan fried oysters, and usually they taste a bit salty and creamy, but this time around, well, let me have Ramsey describe it. So he's managed to take a delicious tasting oyster and turned it into something that's cake and cornmeal. Yeah, so the oysters were like five days old. And when it comes to food, it's impossible to fool Ramsey. And he made it a point to share his disappointment with the chefs. That is f***ing disgusting. F***ing hell. Yeah, he was so dumb with the place. But that didn't stop him from inspecting the kitchen a little more. And that's when he came across some cornbread just lying around in the pantry, totally out of place. But the real problem was the gravy that the customers were being served. And when Ramsey took a bite, he totally wished he hadn't. Oh, oh my god. If a basic gravy made Ramsey sick, imagine how awful the rest of the food was. But this wasn't the only time Ramsey came close to needing to be airlifted to the nearest hospital. You see, Bonaparte's owned by Sue Ray was one hell of an episode. And the head chef, Tim, was single-handedly responsible for driving away their customers. I mean, one look at his kitchen and you'll know why. Nice. Frozen. Get it back in the oven. Yeah, Tim was struggling to keep things together. And when it came to the food, the taste was just as awful. This is really worrying. A head chef who can't even taste his own food. The very first dish Tim made for Ramsay came out burnt. But that was only the beginning. Despite the terrible first attempt, Ramsay really wanted to try Tim's signature scallops. But he probably wished that he quit while he was ahead. Ramsey quickly started to feel his stomach turning, and a deep sense of unease gripped his whole body. And before long, the inevitable happened. You know, he's only gone and given me a rancid scallop. Someone get him a drink. No, I'm starting to understand why he decided to take a decade-long hiatus from the show. Anyway, I know Ramsey has had some pretty nasty stuff in his life, but nothing comes close to what he had at La Frite. So this restaurant, owned by Andre and his son Alex, had one major issue. But despite all the signs, they failed to recognize that their main problem was their food. Yeah, um, vinegar dressing is so strong. Yeah, they couldn't get even a simple salad right. So that should set the tone for Ramsey's next order. Oh. Nah. Seafood crepe not only looks like a pile of vomit, but it tasted like it too. First of all, it wasn't even a crepe. It looked more like a pie. And it was cold around the edges to boot. No wonder Ramsey spat it out. But that reminds me of another restaurant. Something similar happened in Thousand Oaks, California, which is home to Sushi Ko a Japanese restaurant run by Akira and Lisa. Akira was no stranger to the restaurant business. He had years of experience as a sous chef. But when it came to the business side of things, all that experience meant nothing because the place was a disaster. And a lot of it sadly had to do with the food. A tale as old as time, I'll tell ya. Are you guys wearing hats for service? Uh, no. Nothing at all? No. Man, miso soup is a classic. How could they mess up such a basic dish? Not to mention they serve the soup cold. God, even I'm offended and I'm not even Japanese. But the next dish was somehow even more appalling. Poison. That would have been my cue to leave the place. I mean, come on, hair, really? 
but Ramsey was curious to find out what else they would serve at the restaurant. And so, he decided to stick around for a little longer. But I never expected he would order the one dish the waitress asked him not to. But at the same time, it was inevitable, you know? I mean, you can't not press the big glowing red button that says do not press in big bold letters, right? Anyway, the waitress was so taken aback that she actually wished him luck before he tried the dish. And then, finally, the long-awaited dish arrived. And here comes the moment of truth. Uh, he was probably wishing he took the waitress's advice. It was so bad that, well, I don't think I've ever seen Ramsey do this before. <laughs> Seriously, what the heck is a sushi pizza anyway? It had to have been some kind of a joke, right? But hey, let's look on the bright side. You see, Ramsey learned an important lesson. Next time the server warns you not to order something, you better take it seriously. But hey, I know you all are clamoring for some more season 8 content, and I'm spoiled for choice when it comes to more modern nasty restaurants. Yeah, I'm talking about the first drop for season 8, the Bel Air restaurant in New York, Queens. Probably shouldn't come as much of a surprise if you've seen the new season. Run by brothers Cal and Peter, the family business had put more distance between them than actually pulling them together. And when Ramsey entered the picture, he couldn't have expected what was coming. So there he was. And the first thing he ordered was a basic coffee, but even that wasn't up to par. And well, dish after dish, it didn't get any better. No matter what he tried, Ramsey simply couldn't stomach it. It actually came out faster than it went in. Like I said, over the years, Ramsey had learned his lesson, and he realized it was better to spit it out now than throw it up later. As for the basement, well, I've gone into great detail about that particular hellhole in one of my earlier videos. And if you missed it then, make sure to check it out, because you're not going to want to miss exactly how nasty it was. But to sum it up, the place looked like a scene out of a horror movie, and a pretty realistic and scary one too, not a shitty B movie. With rusted, broken oven doors with some weird liquid leaking out of it, it definitely wasn't a place I'd want to be trapped in. But if you thought it couldn't get any worse, you're wrong. Because when Ramsey checked out the meat fridge, he couldn't believe his eyes. What the f is that? Is it was like there was no end to it. Marinated chicken. Oh my god. I mean, how hard is it really to at least try and clean it, huh? When it came to the chicken, what Ramsey found straight up ended service for the day. Even the chicken's frothing at the mouth, and it's dead. Frothy chicken. Those words shouldn't exist in the same sentence, unless that sentence is delicious chicken served alongside a frothy beverage. Anyway, despite the decade-long gap, Ramsey was so overwhelmed that he eventually... Well, I'm sure you know. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> just like old times, huh, Ramsey? Now, Ramsey is currently on a mission to rescue restaurants that have hit a dead end after the pandemic. So I can only sit back and pray for his health and his life while I'm at it. Now, wait till you hear what Ramsey had to say about this next contestant's dish. Okay, how would you react if burnt meat, an apple burger, or a hairy lobster landed at your table? I'd lose my appetite right there and then. But when this contestant presented some wet pastry, Ramsey about lost it. So what happened is, in episode 10 of season 13, Roe and Aaron found themselves in the thick of it. In the intense heat of the Indian cuisine challenge, Ro was the third contender from her team to face down Ramsey's judgment, and she faced off against Bryant in the cod round. With anticipation building, Ro unveiled her phyllo wrapped cod creation, only to be met with disappointment. Ro a chance to put the red team ahead with her phyllo wrapped cod. The phyllo face is wet. Yeah. Suck it. It's like eating a mouthful yeah. of wet. Like, seriously, a wet phyllo. Now, Ramsey's comparison to a wet tissue was harsh. Fair, but harsh. But at this point of the competition, he had high expectations from the contestants. And Roe clearly failed to make an impression. See ya, guys. 
two. But she wasn't the only one who failed the challenge. When it was time for Aaron to present his lamb dish, he was as confident as they come. Well, you have to see the brilliant dish he brought to the table. So having studied a little bit of Indian food, I did a date chutney inside of the phyllo. Oh boy. Inside the phyllo pastry, Aaron had tucked some date chutney with a little drizzle of mango powder on the top of the lamb. A bold move, but the judges had some equally bold things to say. The lamb is cooked very nice. Bizarre, the old uh, chutney inside phyllo pastry. Disaster doesn't even describe the half of it. I mean, the seeds and the dates and the peculiar phyllo stuffed chutney just failed to make an impression. But you have to give it to him. Well, he did come up with a really wild combination. At least he didn't serve dog food to the judges <laughs> like this next contestant. Oh yeah, Sade's blunder will go down in Hell's Kitchen history as the most stupid mistake ever. You see, I get it. It was the dog show planning challenge, but Sade took it to the next level. I thought we were cooking for dogs. I mean, she actually believed that they were preparing food for the dogs. But you have to see her at work. The passion and commitment with which she crafted a <laughs> braised beef dish for her four-legged customers was remarkable. I've never done this before, but I guess it makes sense. As for Steve and Bryant, though, they were baffled.